for their take. My political power panel is with me now. Red Alert Politics Editor Ron Meyer, Sirius XM Patriot host David Webb, Democratic strategist Jimmu Green. Welcome to you all. So, Jimmu, I want to ask you about Donald Trump's tone. Many people thought it was ominous. I'm going to read one of his quotes. Our convention occurs at a moment of crisis for our nation. Attacks on our police, terrorism in our city threaten our very way of life. Any politician who does not grasp this danger is not fit to lead our country. He had wild applause to that. Does Hillary Clinton have to toughen up? Gosh, well, it, it was to paraphrase Donald Trump, the only thing you have to fear is everything. Um, I, I think Hillary Clinton's answer to that next week is going to be a message that shows how her focus is going to be bringing the country together. Yes, there was a lot of applause in that convention hall, but that's not what America looks like. Donald Trump could not stop talking about the 13 million votes he got in the primary process. He needs to get over 100 million to win, and that was not evident in just the divisive and angry and I mean his speech he wouldn't stop yelling I was just tense the entire time you can motivate people with fear it's a clear campaign tactic that has has won campaigns in the past but I think right now the American people are looking for a uniter all right David I'm sorry. what is your viewer in the room I know you have a different take and we want to hear it no, I'm not, I don't have a different here. take I have a different set of facts which anybody can Google I don't know remember the point or anybody could actually challenge Jammu to find it for me anywhere where Donald Trump said the only thing you have to fear here is everything itself. I don't know what speech Jammu heard and read, but here's the brilliance of what they did. If you go to Trump, if you go to his website, he cites, and there are citations like a college thesis of where the sources are for his speeches, the legal speeches. I would recommend. Because I would, let, they wanted to make sure finish. no one thought that he you. plagiarized let me, it. Let me, finish, <laughs> let me finish. I didn't interrupt you. It's rude. So what he did was they did a speech. They also put out the source in for the facts that are in the speech. Now, I haven't finished studying it, but I was actually in that room. Yes, both parties and their candidates play to the base when they're there. That's what you do. But a lot of what Donald Trump said is based on the fact that this is what Americans see, and they provide the facts for you to go check for yourself. He said, I'm your voice. I'm your voice. And by the way, that's different than the message of Hillary, which is, are you with me? Donald Trump says, I'm with you. To the average American out there, that says, hold it, I've got somebody who may fight for me. By the way, he also only needs about 65 to 68 million, not 100 million. So the numbers actually need to be on point. So, Ron, I want to bring up something that, that David just alluded to. One surprise that I heard actually came more from Ivanka on maternity leave and she spoke about policies that most people think of rightly or wrongly as part of the democratic platform I just want to play her comment and then I want to ask you for your reaction here's Ivanka as president my father will change the labor laws that were put in place at a time when women were not a significant portion of the workforce and he will focus on making quality child care affordable and accessible for all so, Ron, what do you make of that? I mean, that speaks very directly to everyone who is in her age group. She specifically said, I'm a millennial, I'm a professional person, this is important to me. But is this an attempt to get independents or swing voters, and will it work? Both her speech and Peter Thiel's speech, I think, were directly at the millennial generation, which Donald Trump has struggled with. He's gotten either around 20 percent or below, so I think it was great for them to do that. With, with Ivanka's speech in particular, we don't know what specifics she's necessarily talked about. Maybe she's talking about the government actually offering tax incentives for women to start care accounts where they could save up for maternity leave. There's other free market solutions beyond what the Democrats peddle. Uh, with identity politics. There are free market solutions out there that I think her and Donald Trump could look into. There are women's groups that are out there pushing those on the, on the conservative side that maybe that's what she's talking about. And so I think that's what we have to sort of see as it comes. But it's an important message still to see that there are problems out there, that women feel these problems, that millennials feel these problems. Just acknowledging that the problems exist is a big start for this campaign and saying, you know what, we actually see your problems. And I think, frankly, the Democrats' response was these problems don't exist. You know, Jammu's response saying that, you know, you should feel safe. What's happening? What's happening in Munich right now? What happened in Orlando? What's going on? Did it say the American people feel safe and everything's okay? Or that women or millennials don't, you know, don't feel great in this economy? But that's what, that's what the what response has been from this administration, from the Obama administration saying, well, Americans feel pretty good right now. Well, you know, this is why Trump's campaign has taken off, because there's a big portion of America who don't feel like things... So 
have Jim, gone okay I want to pick up on that point years. from Ron because I, that is a fair point. I mean, both on the right, if you want to argue Donald Trump, and on the left with Senator Sanders, there has been this feeling of frustration, collective frustration. The current government doesn't work for me. Oh, I, I absolutely agree that people are terrified and they are frustrated. But who are they looking for in a leader is not someone who is going to continue to stoke those flames. They're looking for someone who is going to come up with solutions and bring us together. To Ivana's speech, Ivanka's speech last night, it's hilarious that in that audience that David was in, they're cheering for equal pay when they have voted it down and vetoed it every chance they've gotten. A Republican convention has never cheered for equal pay before in the There's past. I thought she did great. She was very polished. Okay. She has every resource to David, give a polished. I'm not only chopping at the bit, but the she facts, cannot just the say that they're going to support women when her party has done everything possible to stop equal pay for women. Well, maybe it's a right. Term, nice, but. nice try, a little better. All that. Here's what she said, and I suggest again you actually watch. I did. I watched read, it multiple maybe read times. Maybe the speeches. I watched it multiple because times because what she talked about and what she parsed accurately in that is the different levels of pay and the factors that go into that. So here's my suggestion to America. This is the debate between three people who are pundits on TV. Go out and read what they said and decide for yourself if they're speaking to issues that matter to you. And that's what we can agree on because they need to read because there were so many lies. Well, we are so going to continue this conversation, Ron. Lies and disparagement. That's